why every season on earth begins twice. When is the first day of summer? Some would say it's June 1st. Others insist on June 20th, 21st, or 22nd, the solstice. The same thing happens with other seasons. So what's the right answer? It depends on why you're asking. Seasons are defined in two ways. Astronomical seasons are based on Earth's position relative to the sun. Meteorological seasons are based on annual temperature cycles. Both divide the year into spring, summer, fall, and winter. But they have different start and end dates for each. Our calendar is based on astronomical seasons. The Julian calendar was introduced in ancient Rome. Back then, the seasons began on different days than today. That's because we use the Gregorian calendar. It's slightly different. This start of each astronomical season is marked by an equinox or a solstice. Equinoxes are when Earth's day is split almost in half. They occur every six months in the spring and fall. An equinox occurs when Earth's orbit and its axial tilt combine. The sun sits directly above the equator. On an equinox, roughly half the planet is light. The other half is dark. As the new season progresses, the sun's position changes. Depending on the hemisphere, the days will get lighter or darker. This will culminate with the arrival of the solstice. Solstices mark the brightest and darkest days of the year. They're also driven by Earth's stilt. Solstices mark the beginning of astronomical summer and winter. When a hemisphere is tilted toward the sun, it's brighter. At the same time, the other hemisphere is tilted away from the sun. It's summer in one hemisphere and winter in the other. But this method of measuring the seasons presents some challenges. The solar year is approximately 365.2422 days long. It's impossible for any calendar to perfectly sync with Earth's orbit. That's why equinoxes and solstices fall on different dates. This is inconvenient for keeping climate statistics. So weather forecasters and climatologists use meteorological seasons instead. They're more closely aligned with annual temperatures. They also sync well with the civil calendar. Meteorological seasons are far simpler than astronomical seasons. They divide the calendar year into four seasons. Each season lasts exactly three months. Meteorological seasons are based on the annual temperature cycle. Winter takes place during the coldest three months of the year. Summer covers the hottest three months. Spring and fall mark the remaining transition months. In the Northern Hemisphere, that makes it very easy to follow. Spring begins on March 1st, summer on June 1st, fall on September 1st, and winter on December 1st. In the Southern Hemisphere, the seasons are reversed. Spring begins in September, summer in December, fall in March, and winter in June. Meteorological seasons are consistent across the years. This allows meteorologists to make complex statistical calculations. It's necessary to make predictions and compare seasons to one another. Dealing with whole month chunks of data is more convenient. After all, we organize our lives around calendar months. Astronomical seasons rarely come into play in our daily lives. So when is the first day of every season? It isn't the first of the month or the position of the sun. It's both.